Dave here and this is a new episode in the RTV series and today we're going to check out the work of Shathish Sathish Kumar. Um, I actually found this guy, I think it was recommended to me on ArtStation in the community page or tab and uh, the thing about Satish Kumar is that his compositions I think is what really sets him apart. Um, I think it's even better now, this is kind of a bold claim, but I think it's better than uh, Sparth. Ooh! <laughs> um, and I'm not saying Sparth, it's not It's not an either or, it's just that maybe it's because I can see more thumbnails from Satish compared to Sparth. Um, and in Sparth's recent work, he does keep the same kind of formula, and it kind of makes sense, but you know, I do like the... If you go back to the recent episode, just focus on the the earlier works of uh, Sparth, maybe a few years back, especially it's more Halo stuff. It's a bit more dynamic in terms of the the perspective shots, um, and I think that's what that's actually my kind of favorite types of work from Sparth is his more kind of dynamic shots compared to his more kind of a uh, formulaic kind of stuff where you have the foreground, the midground, the midground, and the background. You know, there's there's this kind of formula in concept art. Where you always start with a, with that kind of a leveling per se, and uh, yeah, but Satish goes a bit rogue, in that he does experiment a lot, not just with his painting stuff, but in terms of his like perspective shots. Um, it's very interesting, very dynamic, and uh, he does he, he he knows how to paint obviously, but he does use 3D sometimes, especially Blender. Um, I've seen him use 3D coat. Or he does say he's, he has used a 3D code. Um, I do recommend you buy his... Uh, he does have a graphic composition tutorial. Um, he does sell it on ArtStation. I don't think he does have a Gumroad. Um, I think I did buy it on um, ArtStation. And it's not super expensive. It's cheap enough. And he doesn't have like voiceovers. But just by watching him, you'll kind of get the gist of how he approaches his um, work. And... Uh, you know, let's just get started and uh, yeah. So uh, he does this thing. He does have a process of painting and that he'll start with a black and white sketch and then he'll do a grayscale painting over that black and white sketch and then he'll actually add the colors. And you can actually see him. Um, now this is kind of a GIF process of his work. A GIF, a GIF. Um, and a lot of his work in the beginning, the, the black and white kind of sketch, does remain in the end kind of painting and it's kind of like a testament to how you don't really have to like think of um like you can have you can solve a lot of problems in the very beginning stages and uh, now satish does go does focus more sorry does focus more on environments he doesn't do a lot of character designs or creature designs he's very focused on the environment stuff like just like sparth is and uh yeah, I like also the fact that he does have a painterly look in most of his work. He does experiment with like a um, certain painting or illustration styles in Photoshop. However, uh, I I think his painterly kind of like this image. It, it, most of his work feels painterly to me, even if he often or sometimes does add like photo textures or sometimes he'll even start with kind of a, a 3D base. It will end up looking like an actual painting, which I do like. And again, look at the composition, the way he handles the light. And um, yeah, even the strokes here, the painterly strokes here. Very, very interesting. And um, and look at how he made the background just a simple kind of a, like the mountains and shit. <laughs> very simple silhouette with some kind of a brush strokes in a clipping mask, right? And that's pretty much it. And again, the composition is awesome. Very cinematic, and yes, yeah, Satish does does a lot d does 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 a lot of uh, thumbnails, and I do recommend you watch or buy a few of his tutorials or all of it, because he does show how he does. I think he d oh shit, you know what? I I can't actually remember because it's been a while since I've seen his uh, video tutorial, and I have a bad habit of buying stuff and actually not using them, so. <laughs> It's not a good habit. Uh, but look at these. First of all, black and white. 
um, very solid shapes and he does kind of separate or simplify the thumbnails to a, a black solid, a white solid and, and a few kind of grayscale levels in between to kind of just add a bit more depth to the image. And he does like using some kind of gradient brush. It's kind of a flat brush that has a soft edge and he does use it for the shadows, um, for like big shadows. And um, here you can actually see him use a uh, soft brush and it actually feels like a, like it's, a, I don't know, like a morning, midday, right? And you can actually feel the atmosphere a bit. And look at how much you can solve by just uh, doing the black and white stuff. And he does have a few examples where he shows side by side a black and white sketch and then a colored version of that sketch. And you can see how much he has solved the, the image in the very kind of black and white face or sketch, yeah. So more of it here. And uh, again, very heavy on the compositions. Obviously, he does environments, so he'll know how to handle shapes. And it's not so different from character designs or creature designs. There always has to be some kind of a, some kind of strong shape in it, you know? Some, um, I'm not sure if compositions work as much for character design. Because uh, often environments have to be limited within the frame, but for character or creature designs or any kind of design that's kind of... Um, where you can see the entire thing from one view. Um, Maybe not so much compos. Maybe composition isn't a big, isn't as big of a deal. But it's more about shapes. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. But oh, <laughs> uh, I'm struggling to communicate my ideas. But um, hey, oh, he does have. Is this a character? Uh, I feel like this is more of a, an architectural piece. I think. Uh, and again, he does like using that soft brush to create some kind of atmosphere. And he doesn't overdo the thumbnails, and I think that's why he's very efficient. And he can produce like a lot of these. And as you can see, he has like sheets of this, some in color, some in kind of black and white. And I think it does help to have like very simple brushes. For example, when he does like the blacks here, um, very solid. I think he's using a very simple solid brush to do it. Um, so he doesn't have to waste too much time with like blending or anything. It's just very solid. Very graphic. Um, now for these one, he's for these ones. He does use colors and shit. Why do you keep saying shit? Colors and shit. Um, and yeah, very interesting. Um, this one's a bit more abstract, very impressionistic, which I like. Um, I do like these ones in the bottom, number three and number four. Um, and he does a lot of mood paintings like this. Uh, they're kind of like th they're kind of thumbnails, but they're also like mood paintings because. You can actually feel the mood. And to me, I think you do need color for the mood. Um, a grayscale painting isn't enough for me to kind of communicate the full mood of an image or of a painting. And uh, just looking at Shathish's work, um, I think I'm starting to kind of fall in love with the fact that, or with the concept that maybe I am that kind of guy. Maybe not just impressionistic, but... Uh, Maybe I should focus more on mood paintings, you know? Maybe that's where I can shine the most. And <laughs> um, and again, for, for, for Kumar's thumbnails, um, he does experiment with like the style. This one is actually kind of different. He does use a few line strokes here. Um, still heavy on the, the blacks and the grays, obviously. And very simple. I think he does use the same brush um, to kind of keep it all consistent, right? But uh, yeah, very effective way of painting. Um, yeah. Oh, this is an example of his black and white sketch transformed into a colored kind of version. Um, it's still kind of sketchy. It's a bit developed, but yeah. He did leave this uh, like the f the closest kind of the cave, the same essentially. But he did do kind of a paint over in the areas in light uh, makes sense and he does have a few more and look at how much he solves the or he solves the problem in the very beginning sketch phase just with blacks and whites and some gray values and uh, you can essentially just paint over it uh, layer by layer and reach a kind of full finished image which is very very cool and um 
I've actually been struggling a lot with my environments because I always feel like I have to start from like I have to figure everything out as I go. I do like that concept of figuring things out as you go, but uh, sometimes you can actually make a nice sketch in the beginning and do like a lot of thumbnails and just uh, find out which one works the best and invest in that piece. So I actually did a recent, uh, one of my recent posts on ArtStation was me doing a few grayscale uh, sketches and then investing in one of them to kind of uh, you know develop more add some color do some paint overs and uh, yeah now he does have a lot of brush variety in his work which i do like um especially in his more kind of uh, colored pieces um it just feels right to me very very kind of full um and again composition wise it looks very interesting and look at this painting it's it's uh, I would classify this as a sketch or mood painting because even though it's not fully defined, I can kind of feel the mood um, by the values and by the color or by the hues. Um, oh, you can see him use some color dynamics here. Uh, I think this could be some kind of ship, right? Even though it's not so clear, I, I can feel something with this image. And uh, if it did develop like the shapes a bit more, it would add a bit of extra kind of depth to the image and information obviously but yeah <laughs> um i do like this kind of approach very impressionistic again oh and it, for uh, for his thumbnails he does like to keep it consistent even though he does experiment with like the style um uh, for every sheet of thumbnails he does use the same kind of technique so it does have like a nice um look to it he does have color dynamics on again, and yeah. So he's kind of proof that it doesn't matter which technique you use, if you have a solid understanding of the uh, the fundamentals. Uh, in this case, he's kind of a pro in the fundamentals of composition, and it just looks cool. Even at this kind of level or phase, it, it already kind of looks interesting enough. And uh, like each one of these can actually become its own painting eventually. And uh, it's very cool. It's very, very cool. Um, so here are more color dynamics. Uh, in this case, it does have a bit more color. Um, <sighs> fuck. Um, I look at how many environments he can achieve in just kind of one session. <sighs> very, very interesting. Um, oh, he it's kind of the... It's similar to this one, I think. Shit, where is it? Oh yeah, there you go. Where there are kind of lines in it. Um, it reminds me of a certain artist. I just can't remember the guy's name. He does do like a lot of lines. Um, oh, he does. I think this is some kind of character here. Um, it still looks very, very interesting. Um, he does add a border in, in his kind of thumbnails. Um, <laughs> I wasn't able to add much information to the to that sheet, but uh, yeah. So this one is a bit more almost charcoaly, like a lot of these sketches are charcoal-ish. Um, very very kind of sketchy, and uh, it almost feels this these ones feel like sumi -e, sumi, -e, you know the kind of a Jap. I believe it's kind of a Japanese brush painting kind of um, thing. <laughs> uh, this one's pretty cool. I like this tag. Look at the mood of this. These two, I think, are already the best. Um, another example of how you can bring a simple black and white sketch and bring it to a colored kind of version. Um, I actually uh, thought this piece in the bottom was actually kind of a 3D thing. And once I actually saw the black and white sketch, I was like, oh shit, it's a 2D painting. Fuck. And I, like, I actually like how Shatish add, added this kind of red or orange kind of a thing in between the shadow and the light area. I'm not sure if it's um, realistic, but it does add some kind of thing. <laughs> and even the shadow, it does have like hue variety in it. You can see some ye yellows or oranges, some blues, some greens. It's, uh, it's a bit subtle, but it's there. Um, 
Oh, so we have more colored um, thumbnails here. Very, very interesting. And uh, I think doing colored thumbnails do take a bit more time because obviously you're kind of thinking of the uh, the colors, right? Um, so maybe if you're kind of a pro, it makes sense. But if you're kind of in the beginning or intermediate kind of stage, or if you just want to focus more on the thinking, or you want to face your kind of work, I think it's best to start with a black and white kind of thumbnail or sketch and then just work your way face by face or uh, because I feel like you're kind of thinking too much in this one kind of go in this one session um, so I think it helps to just kind of break things down step by step but uh, yeah still looks awesome um, oh he does play a lot with the color dynamics again with this one um, and again very interesting sketches now these ones feel more like mood paintings because you can there's a bit of lighting involved there's also um, an indication of the the atmosphere of like the, the color theme right uh, <laughs> uh, oh he does have like a tutorial of like uh, uh, of this kind of graphic kind of look where he paints or sketches something in this kind of style. And I think he does have a brush pack or a brush set. Um, he does sell it again on ArtStation. Um, and yeah, it does have a very nice look, very painterly and graphic at the same time. I think he does use kind of a mixer brush. I'm not sure. I forgot, but um, I mean, geez. Oh, I think he does add some kind of lens correction. You can see the kind of shift in the, the reds and the blues. It does have a kind of a, a cinematic kind of shift. The kind of 3D kind of look. Um, and again, look at this. Look at how he did this kind of nice shadow here. Um, very, very interesting. And even in his black and white sketch for this one, it's it does have some brush variety. It's not just one brush. So it does... Now, he doesn't use too much. He does have like a branchy kind of brush. Um, a brush with some kind of spacing in it, some kind of gritty kind of spacing, um, and yeah. <laughs> oh, he does have, like, this is the specific image that he painted in that tutorial. Oh, he does have, oh shit, I don't think it's part of the, the, the tutorial that he sells. I think this one's actually free on his YouTube channel. He does have a YouTube channel. He only has like two videos as of this moment, but uh, I do recommend you watch it and just see the way he paints or sketches this thing. Very, very interesting. I will be linking the link in the description below, so no worries. I got you. Uh, um. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, very awesome. Very graphic, very painterly at the same time. Oh, look at this. Um, so you can see this kind of mountain in the background, this kind of architecture. Um kind of like uh, multiple dwellings, I think, in this one kind of area. And this could be like snow or sand, perhaps. Um, and look at how he does this kind of shading thing. This could be like a, a soft kind of a brush. Not like the default soft brush, but, but not like the default soft brush, but some kind of like, a, I don't know. Or maybe it's a mixer brush. Fuck. Now, this one's actually pretty messy, but uh, I think he does use a lot of the, the mixer brush here. You can tell. Um, and I advise that if you do use the mixer brush, you have to create a flattened version of like your painting. So you can easily like uh, smudge or kind of mix things. Because, yeah, if you have like multiple layers and you start using the mixer brush, it's not going to... Uh, and you have like the sample all layers selected, it's going to lag very very much very very much ah uh, fuck oh i actually like this one you can actually see a few like figures here they're kind of like apes um ooh, ooh, ooh. um i was trying to make a monkey sound but uh anyway oh these are like very quick sketches of like a a windmill a windmill a windmill, <laughs> a windmill. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, same style, graphic and painterly at the same time. 
Uh, finally. Now, they, these ones do have some photo textures in them. And, uh, again, with these series of, like, paintings or mood paintings or sketches, um, he does apply the same approach. And it does provide that kind of consistency, which looks really, really good in the end. And, uh... He does this thing where he likes to keep a certain kind of look or style in just one post in his um, art station portfolio. Um, I do recommend you focus more on his lunchtime sketches because he does post like a lot of images in just one post. So that's kind of very, very um, nice. <laughs> look at that. He does use, I believe, the smudge tool here maybe. Um... Not sure. Very gritty. Look. Ah, oh, shit. Look at that. It's still, it's still not like super detailed, but it does have like, you can actually feel the atmosphere. And look at how much he simplified the figures here. Cause they're not like the main kind of focus. He's just trying to capture the, the essence of the image. And uh, he, he has like a lot of sketches in his um, portfolio. And I think that's why, like I think this gives him the opportunity to like fail more. Um, so he can just kind of learn a lot more by just doing like a lot of sketches. Like you don't, you don't actually have to always finish things to a more kind of a um, kind of rendered level. Um, you can just focus on like mood paintings and you can solve like a lot of problems. And um, with just like simple techniques or with just a few strokes or the point is you don't have to like go overboard with your, with your paintings or illustrations or renderings you just have to like get enough of it out and i think doing a lot of sketches like shatish is a great way to learn more and just fail more in general so you can like get more feedback and just uh you know like just learn faster and um i think learning faster i could do an art chat episode of this but i do think learning faster is like the most important skill especially in this age um because i am trying to uh, work on my own i'm trying to be a bit more independent like financially and because it it just provides you more freedom and freedom nowadays is kind of like it's getting rare and i do agree that having a kind of business mindset especially for, for like artists is like the way to go to just get a bit more freedom right because if you're held up to a certain kind of company or employer, you kind of have to do what they tell you to do. And uh, what if you don't want to take a certain something, right? <laughs> um, you, you need to have like a, a way to say, you know what? No thanks, I've got this thing here and it's, you know, it's financially viable. And uh, yeah, the, the point is learning faster is very important and I think doing a lot of sketches um, wait, the reason why learning faster is important is because um, we don't really have enough time or we don't have like a lot of time because things are kind of speeding up and we always have to be kind of ahead in a way and uh, yeah we just need to um, do more sketches right do more mood paintings um, of course this would depend on your actual kind of goal but uh, I think it, it would have hurt to like do a couple a week but for me for me i think i would definitely benefit from doing a lot of like quick sketches um i should do more like black and white just to get good at the composition and then if i'm very ballsy i can like do colored mood mood paintings kind of like uh satish oh, i can't say his name satish Sha satish and look at this image it's very very simple not a lot of information, but look at the mood of it, right? He does have a photo texture here in the in this kind of ground, right? But he was able to play with the the values, the lighting enough that it creates some kind of depth in this very, very simple painting. I mean, there's hardly anything in this painting that's kind of understandable. I mean, all you can tell is that there is this kind of background, there is kind of like a ground. And then this could be like smoke or something. But it still looks kind of full, even though there's nothing in it. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah. 
very nice painting here. It's actually easy on the eyes. He, he does have like a few pieces where if you just look at the painting, it's just easy on the eyes. And it's just very, very alluring, very seductive. Um, and I think it helps to not oversaturate your like um, paintings. And uh, you're kind of like pulling the, the viewer into your image that way. Because if it's too bright and saturated, you're kind of like um, signaling a certain like... You know how in nature, like if you see some kind of colored animal, like a very colorful animal or a very colorful flower, it usually means it's kind of poisonous. So <laughs> I think we tend to avoid super bright stuff or super like saturated or colorful stuff, right? Because it's, it's a bit too good to be true, you know? Anyway, um, this one is actually fairly simple in that he does like have very, very big brush strokes, but he was still able to achieve some kind of depth. Um, even though you can see like, again, the big brush strokes, this painting or sketch looks very, very big. Or you can actually feel like the depth of this um, environment, um, especially in this in this area, in this kind of plane here. This painting or sketch just feels big, or this environment just feels big. Um, yeah. Oh, look at this! Very, very. It's all in the kind of purple hue um, palette. But, oh, he did develop the horse and the character a little bit, not too much. It's obviously some kind of knight. Um, but look at that. Look at that. And uh, he doesn't actually have photo textures in this one, but it still looks kind of believable. He does have like a few greens, a few reds, um, a very, very slight hue variety, but uh, I think it just plays a lot with the values and everything. You know what, I think he may have started with a black and white sketch and then he just kind of expanded or made it bigger and then colored it. You can actually see a few pixelated like uh, edges here. Because um, obviously he does like the black and white stuff in a very small thumbnail or size. And then he probably just kind of expands it and then does a, a colored kind of uh, paint over, right? Oh, this one's actually a, again, you can see that kind of pixelated edge. So I think he did start this painting in a, in a very small size, black and white, probably. And then he uh, did a colored version of it. Um, and this could be some kind of, uh, hmm. I like this. Very nice mood painting. Um. You know what, I don't think this goes beyond a bit in terms of a mood painting. It's still a mood painting, but I think the moment he added this kind of detail and this kind of like organic... Are these eggs or something? Um, the moment you add a few more details to a mood painting, I think it's starting to become like a, like a design thing. Right? If you just focus on this part right here, uh, maybe it's more of a mood painting, but the moment you just add a bit more details, I think it's... It's going beyond. I think you get the point. <laughs> Ooh, more colored thumbnails. I mean, look at this. Um, look at how we did this kind of dash of light. Very, very interesting. Um, I still do think he did start out with the black and white. And then he just kind of colored the thumbnail in this kind of stage or size. I think. Um, but yeah. A lot of his thumbnails look like actual paintings, or they could be like developed more, developed more into an actual painting. <sighs> um, very, very interesting. Oh, for this one, he does use a 3D base. I believe he did use 3D coat um, for this one. But again, in the end, it still looks like an actual painting. So here you can actually see this kind of like, uh, like you could see a lot of the polygons in this kind of 3D model that he modeled, right? And then he painted over it um, layer by layer to achieve this kind of painterly kind of look. And um, so I believe this is, a, this is a gif, a gif of the process. And um, I think it actually helps to have that kind of 
polygonal or cut out look. You can do the same thing in Photoshop with a 2D image. <laughs> 2D image. It's kind of redundant. Um, what you're essentially creating with the polygons or some kind of cut out filter is that you're creating a palette of sorts. And you can just kind of paint over it to kind of blend things, right? And um, it's actually a nice technique. I've actually seen Shin Koo Kim. He's a, a mech kind of artist. He has a few pieces where he does use a cutout filter. Maybe he does bring a photo in and then he'll do a cutout filter in Photoshop and then he'll paint over it um, to kind of blend things and just make it a bit more painterly. Um, yeah. Black and white sketch, grayscale painting. Um, it's kind of a jump between the black and white sketch to the, the grayscale, but the main shapes are still there, so that's kind of nice. Um, and he did add this kind of big foreground mountain cliff thing. The end painting actually looks very, very, especially the kind of water part, you can see. It looks very, very full. Look at that. And I believe he did use a few photo textures here. Um, and again, it's very nicely blended. Very similar to like Jordan Grimmer. Um, Jordan Grimmer does have a YouTube channel. I do recommend you watch his or subscribe first to his um, YouTube channel then actually watch the videos because he does have like a lot of uh, um, paintings where he does use photos and it does have like he, he does know how to blend it together with the painting style that he does have and it just looks very very um, cohesive and um... okay more black and white sketches alien planet And again, it looks very, very interesting. Lots of uh, playfulness with the positive and negative spaces, right? Um, I think it just it just has kind of an eye, or he has developed this kind of intuition to kind of space out which parts should be kind of filled up, and which parts should be kind of opened up, right? And uh, yeah, I think a lot of composition is just trying to play with the spacing of the of whatever is in that kind of frame <laughs> uh, this one actually feels like a sparth uh painting to me right because sparth does like using a lot of gradients so i think that's why this one this specific thumbnail is feeling like a it's <laughs> gosh, I can't talk. Fucking cunt. Anyway, <laughs> I, I I actually like this one more. <sighs> anyway, sorry. Oh, he does use a round brush for most of these thumbnails. Oh, I think this is the one he developed. The one with the knight, maybe. But even at this stage, again, it looks very, very cool. Now for these ones, he does use the white in the canvas. Um, it's okay, but it's not really that effective for me. Or it doesn't look as good as, say, this one. I mean, obviously, you can always like color over it. Um, the composition is awesome, but the thumbnail look is not as appealing as this one right here or this one. Or this, oh, look at this. Very, very awesome. There's kind of like a ship. Look at that. And look at how he achieved all of this, or most of this, with a round brush with some... Or with the color dynamics turned on. And again, once you like turn on the color dynamics in your brush, it already kind of creates an, an automatic kind of texture as you just keep painting over and over something, right? And it actually makes your painting look a bit more filled if you're kind of avoiding the, the graphical look too much um, and you want a bit of like... I don't know, like fuller, kind of more filled up look. I think using color dynamics is a great kind of uh, technique to use. Oh, this one actually feels like a keyframe in a film. It could be like an opening scene or maybe it could be in the ending kind of credits. Um, yeah, and look at how painterly it is. This actually reminds me of John Park a bit because it does have like a very painterly look, John Park. Right? 
And uh, John Perk also does. John Perk also does have like a nice sense in terms of composition. Um, but he doesn't do like a lot of thumbnails. Um, at least in his portfolio. And uh, like he shares like the finished version usually, uh, maybe with the grayscale version. But that's pretty much it. Uh, Sh Sh Sathish, fuck, Sathish does like sharing a lot of his thumbnails. Um, and a qu a quite a few GIFs or GIFs, so that's kind of like a nice touch. Um, so yeah. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Um, he did add some kind of lightning here. And again, not a lot of photo textures here. No photo textures at all. Just painted. Um, maybe he did use some kind of gradient map. I'm not sure. But I do like the look of it. The pinks in the sky, it's kind of a new thing. I've only ever seen pinks in the sky when it's kind of like a sunset, you know? Um, but not this kind of hot pink. This is this is actually kind of saturated, but uh, it is kind of an alien kind of world, so it makes sense. Um, so yes. So this is kind of the last image we're going to check out in the work of concerning the work of a uh, Mr. Satish Kumar. Um, look at that, Jesus! This one is like a mood painting. Right? I think if you had a portfolio of work in this kind of level, you would get hired. Definitely. Right? Because I do think there is a market to just kind of... Um... You know what? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, maybe we will all eventually be like slaves or something. Um, uh, and be working in our designated zones just kind of uh digging our own graves and shit uh, but hopefully there is a world for concept art in this um dystopian world that's happening right now but hey <laughs> uh, anyway i don't want to end this video in a depressing kind of tone i do recommend you subscribe or follow shatish on artstation buy a few of his stuff if not a brush set a few of his tutorials um i also recommend you subscribe on his youtube channel although he does have like only two videos it's still very useful and you know maybe if you just subscribe more or if he gets more subscribers maybe he'll have the the initiative to like do more videos and share more of his process um and yeah um you know what a few comments on this painting very very awesome i like how it's still kind of in a warm tone very yellowish here, very orangey, yellow orange. Um, he did the same thing with the fire, obviously, makes sense. Um, you can actually see some color dynamics here. Maybe this was part of his original thumbnail. Perhaps, not sure. I like how he had some he has some pinks here, some blues here. I'm not sure what this is, but uh, it does make a question. I'm not sure if this one is intentional. Um, but it's you know, it's interesting. And again, in the end. His paintings look very painterly. Maybe he does use kind of a mixer brush to kind of do this kind of shading here. Where he brings or kind of drags some paint around. And you can see this kind of like um, vertical kind of strokes in his painting, right? And you can see it in a lot of his like, or in a few of his black and white sketches. The ones that look kind of painterly and graphic at the same time with kind of like the brushy, the brushy or the brushy kind of brush. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> with the branchy kind of brush fuck damn it dave um so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video um keep painting and stay free